Now this video might get me banned or in trouble. And I think you're gonna question everything that you thought you knew about modern medicine. I'm gonna share just the highlights from this book right here, which I'll put a link down below. There's a lot more details on this topic, but I'm gonna cover the highlights. Typically the RDAs for vitamin D are about 600 IUs. They stand for international units. It's an arbitrary number, which basically a group of people in a committee voted on it. And I really believe it was originally designed to scare people from taking too much of certain things. But at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you who really started this whole thing and it will all make sense. And if we just take a look at 600 IUs, international units, how many milligrams is that? That's just a little bit more than one tenth of one milligram. That's a very small amount. For the last 100 years, vitamin D has been a very controversial topic because I believe it helps so many people in so many ways. We use sunbathing called heliotherapy back in the early 1900s. This was before vaccines and this was before antibiotics. And they would heal up their TB and their asthma, osteoporosis, tooth decay, psoriasis, mood issues diabetes, heart disease, and even cancer. And then what happened? We're told to stay out of the sun. Here, take your sunblock. Vitamin D can be toxic. What you need to know is 600 IUs is basically standing out in the sun in the summer, 1.8 minutes, less than two minutes. 10,000 IUs is standing out in the summer sun for about 30 minutes. But in the last 100 years, this number 600 I use has been pushed on people. That's what you need. And because of some vitamin D toxicity issues, the government commissioned the University of Illinois, Chicago to do a study on the toxicity of vitamin D. The previous reports of vitamin D toxicity was related to improper production techniques. So it really wasn't about the vitamin D itself. It was in the manufacturing of vitamin D. Now, this uh, study that they did went on for nine years. It involved hundreds of doctors 773 patients, 63 dogs. Take a wild guess what type of dosage they use for vitamin D. 200,000 to 1 million IUs. Well, guess what? They did not find any toxicity. Now, what you have to realize is that vitamin D3 is very special in that it's an immune modulator. The Institute of Health is kind of a governing body, and they're the ones who recommend 600 IUs of vitamin D3. Here's the problem with those numbers and their evaluation. There was two other organizations who reevaluated their data and found that they made some mistakes. Well, with 600 IUs should have been 8,895 IUs. Let's take a look at one of the major vitamin D researchers. And he invited me to talk. I got up and presented this data to, you know, these were the top vitamin D researchers in the world all assembled there. It was vicious, the attacks of how vitamin D doesn't do this. How could you say this? I said, I'm just presenting the data that we have assembled. You're walking on guys' careers that have spent their whole career doing this stuff. They never conceived that this could be true. You know, you don't know what you're doing. Well, the government wasted a whole lot of money here for you to conduct these worthless studies. The same type of thing happened to uh, the professor who discovered folates, was chastised and not believed for, for decades, that how could a nutrient have this kind of an effect? Of course, he turned out to be true, but it was the same sort of attacks. Take a look at these interesting graphs. Zero is right in the center of these graphs uh, by the equator, where you have the most sun, and the most vitamin D, so MS, breast cancer, colorectal cancer, and diabetes, lowest risk at the equator. So this just gives an interesting correlation between latitude and certain diseases. Now, I want to share some additional things. In 1900 to 1910, a lot of people got rickets. It was common back then. 1918 to 1920, they use sun therapy in cod liver oil for rickets. 1922, they discovered vitamin D. 1946, the number 400 IUs was recommended to prevent rickets. 1950 to 1970, despite the increased awareness that vitamin D goes beyond just bone health, they kept the numbers for vitamin D at 400 IUs. 1980, there were more benefits for vitamin D for your immune system, for other chronic diseases but they kept the same 
400 IUs for vitamin D3. Then in 1997, the Institute of Medicine updated the RDAs. They wanted to introduce something new called the adequate intake because they said the RDAs weren't very scientific. So take a while to guess what they recommended at this point. 200 IUs for adults, 400 IUs if you're 51 to 70, and 600 IUs for over 70. Finally, in 2010, they went uh, up to 600 IUs for adults under 70 and 800 if you're over 70. Now, this whole time they're recommending 400 IUs. There are three medications that were used on a regular basis and take a while to guess what they were. Vitamin D at 50,000 IUs. So you can take it if it's prescribed through medication, but everyone else, you know, take 400 because of the toxicity of anything more. I mean, think about in the 80s, this huge campaign to stay out of the sun, take sunblock, the sun will kill you, you're going to get skin cancer. Melanoma, which is the number one skin cancer, it develops in areas where you're not exposed to sun. Personally, my viewpoint on melanomas, it's really a vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D is needed in 2,700 different genes. There are so many barriers for absorbing vitamin D3. You have the difficulty getting vitamin D in food. You have this thing called vitamin D resistance, which a lot of people have genetically, where the vitamin D receptor won't receive the vitamin D. The darker the skin, the less absorption of vitamin D you get. The older the skin, the less vitamin D you create. The more you weigh, the less vitamin D you're going to absorb because vitamin D gets diluted into the fat cells. But it's very obvious to me that big pharma, modern medicine, want you to take extremely low doses of vitamin D, if any vitamin D at all. So this is just scratching the surface. If you want the complete data on this history, check out this book right here. I'll put a link down below in the description.